does the will of God always happen? This argument comes from 2 Peter 3.9, which says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, Free Will Freddy takes this verse and says that God's will is that every single person would be eternally saved. God wants every last individual to go to heaven. But the way is narrow, so most of the time, God isn't going to get what he wants. And so his will won't come true. Now, for a lot of Christians, this would make perfect sense, because if you believe that salvation invariably requires works and that salvation can be lost because of my free will, then it doesn't matter if God's will doesn't come, uh, because every single time God has a will, it's entirely based on the permissions of man anyway. That's why they will use, not not free grace people, but you know, the, the Arminianists, they use these sort of narcissistic, grandiose statements, whereby the God of the universe, this supreme authority over life and death, needs you to allow God into your life, or God can give you the power to overcome your sin, but you need to allow him to do it, or you need to change your will to submit to his will, like as if God needs our permission to do things, even though he's God. It's just the weirdest terminology to me. And this is why free will is integral to the doctrine of conditional security, because all of the promises and the wills of God, such as all that the Father has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Well, the way they see it is that this is entirely subject to the permissions of man, and man has been known to change his mind. And so Jesus losing nothing doesn't really mean anything. And as I have demonstrated before, they think that Jesus lost Judas based on a verse that doesn't actually say that, by the way. So then Chosen Charlies, they fight back against this and say that, well, saying the will of God doesn't always pass, or come to pass rather, makes God look like a failure and a loser. And Jesus fulfilling the will not to lose any and not cast anybody out is integral to salvation. So we need to go back to 2 Peter 3, 9 and redefine what the word all means, the, you know, the elect or every tribe and, and tongue and nation and so forth. Well, these are false premises to be arguing from because this verse actually has nothing to do with God wanting everybody in existence to be saved or even wanting specific persons to be saved. Rather, Peter is explaining that the Lord promised that he would come again, but there would be many uh, scoffers doubting this. But the current heavens and earth, as they are, they are stored and reserved. And one day with the Lord is, is as a thousand years and vice versa. So the, the point that Peter is getting at here is that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He, he, in other words, he's not delaying the second coming unnecessarily. He's holding it back from judgment because in Peter's time, while there are yet scoffers saying, where is the promise? There are future generations of Christians like you and me from Peter's time yet to be saved, right? We haven't, we haven't even been born yet at that time. Christians in the second century, the third century, the fourth century, you and I in the 21st century, the Lord is not willing that you or I should perish. So he's withholding the second coming and the judgment and being long suffering to us with that. Uh, all of us, after Peter's time, should come to repentance, right? He's not willing that any of us should perish. And while many of you are watching this are getting very desperate for Jesus to come back, and a few people are probably unhelpfully just sitting around rapture watching, there are many more people that God is yet to save, and he's not willing that any should perish, right? Now, let's get back to the original question. Does the will of God always happen? The problem with answering this question is defining what the will of God is, because the will of God, because the simple thing to do would be to go to every verse that says explicitly will of God. But we might also assume that if the Bible commands us to do something or God makes a declaration of some kind, that this is still the will of God, even though it doesn't say this is the will of God, dot, dot, dot. So it is a complicated question in itself. But let's keep things simple. Let's stick to the passages where the will of God is explicitly mentioned. Does the will of God always happen? Now, even though I have explained in this series that I lean away from hard free will, and I would assert, I would, I would still assert that the will of God does not always happen, and that this is a, a shocking thing to many predestinarians, because they will pose this problem that I already alluded to. God's will 
is that Jesus should lose nothing that he's given eternal life to. So if God's will doesn't always come true, how can we trust that Jesus will fulfill this commitment to not lose any that he's given eternal life to, right? Well, the answer is quite simple. Whether the will of God will happen or not happen depends on the answer to another question. Who is doing the will of God in, in any given verse or passage or subject matter? Are you the one doing the will of God? Or is Christ the one doing the will of God? Well, that depends on the passage, doesn't it? Because when Jesus said in John 6, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Well, Jesus is the one doing the will of God there in that verse. You're not the one doing that will there. It's, it's Jesus doing the will of God in that verse. Now, did Jesus, let's say, did, did Jesus fulfill the will of God perfectly or didn't he? Right? Was it the will of God that Jesus suffered and died at the cross? Let's just say that it is. Well, did Jesus fulfill the will of God in that regard? You know, I have not come to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Father, if you are willing to move this cup, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Now, on the other hand, if we take passages where we are supposed to do the will of God, well, in the same chapter where Jesus said he should lose nothing, he also said, this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise it up at the last day. Well, lots of people saw the Son, including in that chapter, uh, but they didn't all believe on him, did they? Or how about this verse? How about when Paul says, this is the will of God for your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Well, not every Christian abstains from fornication. So what we see here is that man seems to consistently fail to do the will of God. Now, the verbatim word phrase, will of God, is predominantly a Greek New Testament term. I don't think it's so common in the Hebrew Old Testament. And the equivalent word in Hebrew is translated in lots of different ways, like acceptance or favour. So I couldn't find a verse that specifically says, this is the will of God that you walk after my laws, for instance. Or, of course, legalists will say that you have to follow the moral laws. And they base this on the statement that Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And naturally, legalists will take all of the list of works in that sermon and unironically with their two eyes and two hands for some reason say well there you go get on with it choose to obey the commandments choose to follow god choose to submit to his lordship and accept jesus into your life etc etc but there's a problem with this john flat out told you that the sons of god were not born according to the will of man but of god so if you have to enter king the kingdom by doing works and turning from your sins and surrendering your will to do the will of God well the thing is you're not doing God's will because the children of God weren't born by their own will but by the will of God and it has to be that way because man has persistently failed to do the will of God he has shown himself a failure Jesus on the other hand succeeded in doing the will of God being obedient to death even on the cross so we conclude the will of God will always happen if Jesus is doing the will of God because he proved himself to succeed at doing the will of God perfectly. We failed to do the will of God. The will of God won't always happen if you or I do it. That's why we put no confidence in the flesh. We don't put our confidence on the sons of men. We put our confidence in the Son of God. And by that, his will will not fail, because it's Jesus doing the will. Amen.